Hey everyone, this is Terry, and this is a two part series on how to create user map text in PE Design 11. I had recorded this earlier and I had an error in, in the recording, but not only that, I did not cover all the elements and I didn't really go back to some of the basics that I think people need to know before they're mapping files. So let's just talk a little bit about mapping files and why you might want to do it. If you look at the user map text, you can see that there are some sample files that were built into the system. There are seven, seven of them. And I have some fonts here that I have already mapped. This, these are fonts that I purchased from a third party digitizer. So looking on the screen, you see the, the characters A, B, B, 9, and H. These are actually embroidery designs that I imported onto the screen. These are fonts that I bought from a third party digitizer. If I want to use these fonts and I don't map them, I have to import each design onto the screen and then I have to move it into position and line it up. So I'll import the E and let's import a lowercase n. So in the time that I did that, how much time would it have taken me in order to type the name Ken on my screen using my keyboard? Because what happens when you map fonts into PE design or text, you have the ability to type something like I did this PE design from the text tools. So let me choose a font and I, I will type Ken. Now you see how fast that was. I didn't have to open any files. I could type directly from the keyboard. I can use the font attributes that are bought, uh, built into the software and it, I can color this and it's so much easier than it is using an import file and trying to line it up. That is the reason that I want to choose the user map text and create it. It's entirely up to you if you want to go through this exercise or not though. All right, let me clear the screen and let me show you how to do it. You can open up your help file and it will tell you how to import the text, but I want to tell you that there are a couple steps that you need to know beforehand and I want to give you that reference material now. I'm going into my embroidery designs. I purchased some fonts from a digitizer called Designs by Juju. And we'll choose the Quirky Girl embroidery font. And when I purchased designs from this company, she has several different design um, formats, meaning embroidery formats including DST, EXP, and PES. You'll also notice a BX file format. In some software packages, and specifically in Brilliance, they have built a front-end piece that allows you to use a BX format, and it automatically will map the fonts. You do have to go in and make a few changes, but it's very fast. In fact, I like it a lot. Unfortunately, PE Design 11 does not have that. But one thing I will mention is not all software packages that are embroidery digitizing packages have the ability to import fonts. So it's nice that um, Brother has included this for us. I want to go into the PES folder and let me choose the two inch font and I'll select all of these designs. Now you'll notice that there are a lot of designs here. I'll, I'll choose copy and now what I need to do is copy these to the folder for bro the brother software. So I want to go into my font folder that I've already pinned on my quick access toolbar 
because this is where you have to have these fonts copied. And you'll notice that in this folder, I already have some fonts. And these are fonts that are some that I want to show you how to create a batch file with. So let me rename this folder so I can use it later. And let me create a folder. And I'll, you need to name it as it's named here according to the samples. I'm following that format. And this was Quirky Girl. Underscore 2. Okay. Now that I have that. I want to copy the designs that I had pasted onto my clipboard. And you can see all the designs are here in the folder. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to map these fonts. So let's go into the software and let's choose the option that is called the Font Creator. We'll go into Font Creator. And the first thing that will pop up on your screen is this. You want to choose Cancel, select the A, and choose New Font Mapping. Now, again, this will pop up, and you want to tell it to set the standard character height from the embroidery file. It might open up a file that you had previously opened if you have created some fonts like I have. I'm going to choose the open folder and I'm going to browse to where I save those embroidery designs which was um underscore quirky girl underscore two and choose OK. Now it's saying select the embroidery character to use as a standard and they, re uh, they recommend the letter M so I will use the letter M and I'll select it and I'll choose OK. After I've done that, I can now import fonts, and I'll import a single character at a time. So I will it, choose the down arrow so you can see the, the numerals and the characters on the screen. We'll have to add the special characters if they're included in this embroidery file. So let's just start with a capital A, and we'll choose single import. We'll scroll down on the screen and find the capital A and choose import. Now you see it on the screen. That means that it has been imported and when I save this file it will save this mapping. Let's choose B and import. You can also use the right arrow and you can scroll down and choose C or you can choose the down arrow and you can select a specific character. In this case, I chose the lowercase a and you can import it. One of the things I want to tell you is that there are some characters such as the G that have descenders and there are some that have ascenders. When you import these characters, you need to move them down on the screen so that they are descending in the case of the G below the baseline for that uh, two inch character which is in this box here. You can choose browse characters to see the characters that you have imported and you can see that the lower case A sits on the baseline and the G does as well. If you want to add or remove characters and you don't have a special character on this screen you can import it directly by typing the character and choosing add and now that it's here choose OK and now we can select it in the list by going to that character we've changed it on the screen so we will scroll down in the file and find that character We'll select it and choose import. Okay, let's uh, 
go ahead and show you how to correct a mistake if you made a mistake. I'll go back to the lowercase v. I don't think I've, uh, let's see, have I browsed, entered that character? I have not, so I'll choose OK, and I'll import that character. And let's just say that I've imported that character and I'm ready to do the C and I click import. It's going to say a different embroidery file has already been replaced for this character. Do you want to replace it? I'm looking up on the screen. I see I have the B here, so I don't want to replace it, so I'll choose cancel. If I did import it and chose OK, that's not a problem. In fact, let's do it. And I'll say OK. And then when I browse my characters and I look at the B, I see I have a C there. And I say, oh my, I made a mistake, so I'm going to change it. So I'll go back. And while the B is on the screen, up above, I'll choose the B and import it. I'll get that same error message and I'll tell it that yes, I do want to replace that character. Okay, I can go through this process and import all the characters at once, but if I want to go see what they'll look like in the software, I can choose File, Save As. It's very important that you go through this step because this is what registers the file so the software can read it. You can see where other files have been registered. They are, had the name of the file, and they say that they are a user map file. So I will type quirky girl. Underscore two and I'll save it. OK, now what we need to do is we need to close the font creator by choosing the A and choosing Exit. Once we choose Exit, we can go into Text and we can choose the to select to see if I find it in the list. And I don't see it on the list. So what I have been doing, in some instances I see it on the list, in other instances I don't. What I do is I close the software and reopen it. So let's just close the software by choosing Exit. Let's go back into PE Design 11. Close the wizard. And now let's go into the user map text, and here it is. All right, you, as you recall, we have not enter, entered all the characters. Um, so I'm typing some characters I have not entered, and you will notice that when you have not mapped all the characters, in this case I did not map the S, I will see a box. I can look at the list, that is below the, the uh, characters that I entered on the screen under the text attributes, and I can see those that I have mapped so far. If I want to go back and remap some of them, how do I do that? Well, let me show you how to do that. You go back under Options, and you choose Font Creator. Cancel on the screen, and choose the A and choose open or you can choose the most recent files which was quirky girl 2 and now I'll browse the characters just to see what I've mapped I'll close it and I'll go ahead and I'll start entering some more characters so I'm not sure that I uh, mapped the C I have not mapped the lowercase c so I'll choose single import, I'll go down and find the lowercase c and I'll import it. I'll go ahead and choose from the screen. You can notice that anything that is in dark blue has been mapped so far. And let's choose the uppercase k. And I'm jumping around, but I'm just wanting to make a point of showing you how to do this. And we'll import the lowercase k and we'll choose it and import it and close. 
and now I can choose file, save, but I don't have to choose save as because I've already registered this file. I'll go ahead and exit from the software and go back into layout and editing and let's go back and choose the quirky girl 2 from the menu and let's look in the character box here if you recall we entered the K I don't see them here and for that reason what I do is I close the software and say no I don't want to save that file and I open it up again Now when I've opened up the file and I go into the, the text tab, let's close the wizard and choose it, I can now look in the character mapping and I can see the K. So there's something else that I want to share with you about map characters and user map characters. So let me type ABC and I want to show you some of the limitations with user map characters. The nice thing is I can enter them from the keyboard, but if you look at these fonts, one of the things that you notice is that I, if I select the B, I cannot select the color tab and make changes to the color of the font. This is different than the text tools where I can. I can go into the text attributes and I can choose the transform but I need to select all the characters at once and I can transform them and I uh, let me uncheck that but I cannot do name drops let me go back to the color tab you see that I cannot recolor this uh, on the screen and the only way to recolor this is if I save it as a stitch file, and that's another video. However, I can go on my machine. When it comes into my machine, I can select whatever thread I want, and I can recover. I can color it on on my machine. The part two of the video will cover how to import a batch file. And if you have any questions, I respond to questions in YouTube. And uh, you may not like the, the process. You may not like how slow it is. I'm strictly showing you how to import these fonts. I do not work for Brother, nor do I work for any other software company. I'm retired, and I'm simply recording these videos to help you. Thank you.